Hi guys, welcome back to Sensei's Journey. It's been a long time since we've done one of these, but I've uh, moved states and had a lot of ha things happen between now and then. Uh, but today I wanted to kind of come back and uh, address some stuff that uh, people have uh, been having a problem with during quarantine, and that is not having fitness equipment and having uh, fitness equipment just be ridiculously expensive online. Um, so I don't have a home gym per se. I have some dumbbells and uh, a big rock and a log. Um, so I needed to expand. So what I was going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to build a do-it-yourself sled for sled drags and sled sprints and that kind of stuff. Um, it's pretty simple. All we're going to need is a tire. Three two by fours that are about two feet long. We'll need at least 30 feet of rope. Um, the best is like a polypropylene rope and it needs to be about half inch in diameter. We're definitely going to need a razor knife. We'll need a uh, measuring tape to make sure that we can measure the rope properly. We're going to need a power drill and a half inch uh, drill bit. And of course we will need something to put in the tire. Uh, so you're going to need two 50 pound bags of sand. And to make that work, you're also going to need about two rolls of duct tape, really high quality duct tape. And the last thing that we're going to need is two um, eye bolts. Uh, two washers and two nuts to go on those eye bolts. That's what we're going to loop the rope through. So the process is pretty simple. We're going to need to put the two by fours in the tire, um, which I can tell you right now is a chore. Um, I was trying to do it by myself. I needed help. Um, so what I ended up having, uh, I ended up getting some help. My brother helped me. Uh, you put the two by four down in the tire, um, and then you're going to need something to wedge against. I use a, um, a quarter inch piece of steel. Um, and I put that in there and then I put the, so the piece of steel is like this against the tire. Um, and then we've got the two by four like this. I pull back on the piece of steel. Uh, my brother stepped down on the two by four, um, that pulled the tire back to allow the, uh, two by four to push down all the way into the tire. And we did that three times to make sure that we have enough, um, wood in there so that whatever we put in the tire isn't going to fall through. Um, just be careful, make sure that you're being careful. Um, and you know, about two feet is all you really need for like each one of those two by fours. All right. The next step is also sort of difficult depending on how strong your drill is, uh, and what kind of drill bit you have. So what we're going to be looking at is, um, you're going to make sure that you have right in the middle of the tire, you're going to have two, uh, spots that are about four, five inches apart from each other. Um, and you're going to um, drill into the tire in both those spots. Um, be careful when you're first starting because the, the drill is going to want to go all over the place. Uh, so start slow, get a little bit of the, the tire meat, get, get the rubber starting to get out of the way. Then you can speed it up once you actually get um, a little depth to the, uh, the hole. It's going to be a process. The drill's not going to want to eat through that rubber. Um, so we're going to drill down into it. You're going to blow some of the, the debris away. You're going to drill down into it. You're going to blow some of the debris away. And then eventually as you get further down into it, what you're going to do is uh, you're going to apply some pressure as you drill, and that's going to help puncture through the last little bit of it. And the unfortunate portion is you have to do it twice. The next thing is also sort of difficult. It's not, it's not terrible. It's mostly just time consuming. Uh, you have to take the eye bolt and you're going to screw it into the hole. Um, so in the first hole that I did, um, it actually went in pretty easy. It just took a lot of turning. Um, the, the threads went right into the rubber and it was, it was fine. At the end, I did have to go and use the rubber knife and go on the inside of the tire and cut a little bit of the rubber on the inside to make sure that it would go all the way through because there, it wasn't, there was like, it was blocking it. And so once I cut that away, I was able to screw it the rest of the way in. Um, so you want to make sure that when you screw that all the way in, uh, you're going to put that washer on the inside and then the nut it's, um, hand tighten it first. Um, just so that we have it on there. Um, but you're going to want to tighten it with something else like a, a wrench or a, um, like I have a pair of channel locks that I used. Um, but you really want to tighten that down because hand tight is not going to be tight enough. So unfortunately you have to do it twice again. Um, so you're going to do the other side. Um, and then once you get that done, uh, the next phase is looping the rope through. So we're going to take that 30 feet of rope 
30, just 25 to 30 feet, I like a little bit longer. Um, so you can take that 30 feet of rope, loop it through the eye bolts, um, and then you have that whole length uh, out pulled out. Um, then you're going to loop back about, it was probably 26, 25, 26 inches um, back on both sides. So you create a loop at the end. Then you're going to use the duct tape and you're going to, starting at the end of the rope, uh, wrap it up for about eight inches or so up the handle um, to make sure that it's not going to go anywhere. And you might be thinking, ah, that doesn't seem like it's going to be very stable. Trust me, it's a lot more stable than you think. Just make sure that you get over the end of the rope um, and that you you got probably two good passes all the way through. So like wrap, 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 come back around, wrap, 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 wrap. Because if you don't, then you may not have enough strength for it. After you complete that, the tire sled is technically complete. Um, the problem is we just need something to put inside of it. So we're going to take those sandbags uh, and we're going to duct tape them. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to put all of the sand in one side. Um, so you're going to shake it down a little bit, fold the top down, and then you're going to put three pieces of duct tape there to keep the top down. And the next step is you're going to loop that duct tape uh, from one side all the way to the other. Um, you're going to then you're going to flip it around and you're going to go the opposite direction. So you're going to make a perpendicular line like you did. So um, once you finish both of those things, you'll essentially have most of the sandbag covered. And what you'll have to do is essentially just kind of wrap your way around and make sure that the corners are covered. If there's any part of the sandbag that is um, open, uh, if you happen to like bump it against something or whatever, that plastic's not going to last. I mean, you're just going to end up losing sand all over the place. The cool thing is that if you ever have an issue with the duct tape, you can just add more duct tape. It's magic. So you can do this with as many bags of sand as you want. Um, I just did two because um, I have some other weights. I figure that if I want to make it a little heavier, I can put the sandbags in and then the dumbbells and maybe a rock or something. Um, but the sandbags just were an easy way to, um, and cheap way to get some, some weight, um, because it was like four, five dollars. All in all, this project probably cost me, tire was free. Oh, by the way, to get a tire, um, all I did was I called up a local, uh, tire, like, repair place, and I was like, hey, do you have any old tires that I could have, um, for exercise purposes. And they were like, yeah, but you need to make sure that you are not going to use this for any sort of like vehicle. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. I can, you never saw me. So yeah, I, uh, I, I got the tire for free, which you can pretty much do at most places. Cause they, they have to pay like a fee to get rid of them. Um, and then, uh, buying everything, the rope was probably the most expensive thing. It was about $25. Uh, cause I had to buy a hundred feet of it cause I couldn't get what I wanted, which was just, you know, like 50 feet. Um, but so I bought a hundred feet of rope for 25 bucks. Um, eye bolts were a couple dollars a piece. Um, the wood was a couple dollars, like a dollar and a half a piece. Sandbags were about four or five dollars a piece. So all in all, I probably spent about 40, 50 dollars or something on the, on the sled, which is a heck of a lot cheaper than if I had bought a sled kit online, which would be somewhere in the range of about 120, 180 dollars. That's not even the weight. That's just the sled and the, the straps or whatever. Um, and that, that's all well and good, but uh, times are tight and I don't have lots of other, you know, I don't have 45 plates or 25 plates and I'm certainly not buying them right now because people are price gouging the crap out of them. Whenever you're done with the sled, you're just going to put it on pavement or put it on grass um, and just pull that sucker. And you can pull it any way you want. Um, we're going to do a video about uh, sled exercises that you can, that you can do. Um, but here I'm just doing a forward pull. I've got the uh, the loops over my shoulders and I'm just kind of walking forward. Going forward, we're going to be trying to be a little bit more consistent with content. We're going to do some vlogging. going to do some real anime training workouts. I'm uh, going to do some streaming because you guys seem to like that. Um, and if you have any requests for anything, please let me know because uh, why not? I mean, obviously, like you have requests for individual characters or whatnot. But if you have requests for, for certain kinds of videos that we're not doing... Um, then we'll certainly, we'll certainly take that into account, but we actually do have a couple of videos that are like topical, um, that we're going to do. Um, but yeah, if you have any topics you'd like to see me cover or talk about, uh, shoot me a message. I'd be happy to do that. 
But uh, that's all for today, guys. Thanks very much for tuning in to Sensei's Journey. It's been a long, long time. I'll probably, the next Sensei's Journey I do will just kind of be more of a talking thing to let you guys know what I've been up to and why it's been so freaking long since I've done one of these. But anyway, thanks guys for watching. Um, until next time, good luck and train hard.